Hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm gonna show you the sewing steps of the casserole grabber. So you can see here that we have our blocks finished. Now, before you stitch out your blocks, you wanna make sure that you are merging that template that we've provided on top of your quilt blocks so that it gives you exactly where you need to cut once it's all done. So if we look down here, you can see this dark line. That is my additional template that I've added. And then you can see right here that I've kind of gone around and cut my seam allowance as a curve. Now you can either eyeball this or use some sort of a template, or either a ruler or you know something like that to cut that curve. But once you have that cut, you're gonna have both pieces. It'll look something like this. Then what we're gonna do is take this and lay it down on our lining piece of fabric. And this is kind of gonna act like a template as well. And we will cut out our lining fabric. So you will have two separate pieces that are your quilt blocks cut with that curved edge. You'll have a right and a left and then you're gonna have a lining piece of fabric cut that exact same shape. So you can see here that I've got one of my pieces and what we've done is attach the lining to the back. Now you can either base stitch this with your machine or if you wanna just use a little bit of spray adhesive or something like that, that works as well. Once I have these pieces, we wanna bind this edge right here because this is what we're gonna actually use as our pocket and stick our hand inside. So I have got my piece of binding here. I'm just gonna fold that in half and I'm going to line up the edges and then stitch using my half inch seam allowance. So you can see right here that I've got this stitch down. So this is my binding piece stitched along here. We like to use a double fold binding so that once I pull this back and pull it around, I've got my nice finished folded edge right there. So I'm going to then top stitch this down right along that edge. And what that's gonna do is give me a piece that looks something like this. So now I have two of my pocket pieces and I'm gonna set those to the side. Once my pocket pieces are finished, we are going to then assemble our, um, our base piece. So we're gonna start with one of the eight by 12 pieces and I've got two of these blank uh, pieces as well. Those are gonna be on the inside of my grabber. So I've got my pieces here. I'm going to sew those together on one on this end and one on that end using my half inch seam allowance. I'll open that up and press everything flat. So once I've sewn those pieces together, my piece will look something like this. So everything's attached right there. The next step to get everything together is to take my pocket pieces. I'm gonna lay those right on top of those edges. Notice everything's lining up perfectly. So I've got these pieces all together and then I'm gonna base stitch these pocket pieces down. So now this is one piece that's all together. I'm gonna take this, use this as my template, lay it down on a piece of Insulbrite and my backing fabric. You need to make sure that you use Insulbrite in this project at this point um, so that when you actually are grabbing your hot casserole dish, it, you know, the heat doesn't come through. So once I have that all cut out, I'm going to baste all of these layers together. So you can see right here, I have something that looks like this. I've got all my pieces together on the front. If I flip this over to the back, you can see here's my my back lining piece, and I've got my insel bright on the inside there. So we're almost finished with this project, um, but the last thing I need to do is actually do my binding all the way around the outside edge. Now the great thing is we're gonna do this binding exactly like we do all of our quilts, and we are going to start with a piece of bias binding. We did this binding on the true bias. Since all of my edges are rounded, the true bias makes it much easier when I'm going around those edges. So I'm gonna take my piece of bias binding. I like to start along the bottom, somewhere in the middle. I'm gonna line that up. And we found if you fold this back at like a 45 degree angle right here, that once I've come all the way around and, and get to that starting point again, then it makes a nice, clean start and finish. So you're just going to line this up. You're gonna go all the way around. You're gonna be putting pins as you go around the edges. Um, if you get down here to these corner pieces and it doesn't wanna quite lie flat, you can always make a few clips into this bias uh, binding and that'll make sure it lies nice and flat for you. Once I have everything pinned in place, I'm gonna take it to my machine and I'm gonna stitch all the way around the edge using a half inch seam allowance. You can see right here that we've got a piece with all of my binding attached to the front. You can see I've gone all the way around the edge. And right here, you've noticed that um, here's my little overlap piece, and I've kind of overlapped this by a couple inches. Again, you can see here that when I'm folding this back, it gives me a nice, clean, finished edge. All you would need to do is trim off this excess, and then what we're gonna do is fold all this back. 
So we'll start folding it back. We're gonna wrap that to the back. I like to press this down to meet the edges and then fold it again. So you can see here on this one, if I flip this over, that I've got all of this folded to the back and I've got all my pins here to keep that in place. So once I have my binding folded to the back edge, I've got some pins in there. Then what I'm gonna do is the last step is to take this to my machine and just top stitch all the way around the edge. You're gonna um, catch the back piece with it. So you can see right here, I have my finished casserole grabber. I've got this beautiful top stitch on the front. And if we flip this over to the back, I've got my beautiful binding done on the back. And you can see that everything's caught here nicely. So you can see here that your finished casserole grabber is great. And if I put my hands in here, this is the perfect size to pick up any hot casserole dish.